What's up, everybody? Thralls Miller here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jam and John. And we have an album review for you. Another one that I saw that was coming up, and I wasn't sure if I actually owned anything by this band, and I was recently sure I did, and then I checked my collection and was like, no, I don't. I'm actually forgetting what I own now. We're at that stage in the collection. <laughs> Amazing. Or an age. That uh, stage of that's, age. That's possible, too. I mean, 10,000 CDs is hard to keep up with. Anyway, we are going to go over the latest offering from Iron Monkey, Spleen and Goad. This also comes out on the 5th of April on Relapse Records. This band formed in 1994 in England. This is their fourth album overall, second since reforming in 2017. They actually broke up in 1999 and then kind of ventured on to some different projects and then, again, reformed. And I missed the album before this one. But again, I was reasonably sure I owned something by this band, but I didn't. And I kind of wish I did now, and I'm probably going to correct that problem, because this is just some vile, disgusting sludge slash doom metal slash noise. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just a flat out ugly album. And that's a compliment. Like, yep. this yeah. is like a good kind of ugly. Like, if you just like your music... Well, I mean, just gross. This is a band I feel like you should be into. Believe it or not, I've actually never heard of this band. And when he said, we're going to review Iron Monkey, I said, what? <laughs> and then uh, and then I listened to some of it last night before I came over here, and I was like, all right, cool. I agree with everything he said. If you like your music gross and just kind of nasty and like it to yell at you a lot, if you like to be beaten down by your music and dragged into a hole full of sludge and monsters... You're probably gonna like this. Surprised you didn't think it was like some weird off like shoot comic book character or something like Tony Stark had it in the budget to suit up a chimpanzee and mm -hmm. unleashed it on the city. Like that was a terribly irresponsible thing I've done with my money once again. <laughs> Tony Stark doing irresponsible things with his money? I mean, Never. it happens. Never. Now I know I've heard this band before, at least in like compilations. But uh, man, like I don't know if I was like fully prepared for this, even though I've been listening to a lot of sludge metal here lately. But Jesus, like first things first, I gotta talk about how heavy this sounds. It is absolutely grisly sounding. The guitars crackle and snarl. Mm -hmm. There's a big, warm, thick bass to it. The drums have a great punch to it. All of it sounds just raw like it was recorded mm -hmm. in some dingy club that was condemned years ago the speakers sound almost on the verge of breaking especially with the waves of feedback and sizzle on them yeah there, there's a couple times even the speaker we listened to on i thought i heard it crackle a little bit the bass is very low kind of bottoms out a little bit but i think that's what they were going for and you get that right away Right off the bat, the opening track, Misanthropizer, I think that's how you say it. Tons of feedback and like a very just snarled guitar. And like most songs start that way, but it really kind of brings out the fact that this is going to be a really noise laden trip as well. Yeah, it's a weird balance. Like, you know, as I was going over this, I was thinking of bands that are very comparable to it. And of course, sludge metal bands, like the first ones I thought of were I Hate God. Weed Eater, and definitely a bit of Bongzilla, too. But as it kept going with all the, like, noisy transitions and, again, that constant feedback, and, again, like, not always the most metal riffs, but they're played so damn loud. Like, you get a little bit of that noise rock vibe, like Today is the Day and Unsane, and even Fudge Tunnel, which, honestly, like, listening to this, I would have to think that Fudge Tunnel, well, they were probably contemporaries at the time, too, but also probably an influence on this band. I get the noise rock vibes mostly on the slightly more up-tempo tracks, Concrete Shock, uh, Rat Flag, which is a just aggressive, fast-paced song, probably one of the speediest songs on here, and Lead Transfusion and Exlex, which are more up-tempo, but they do a lot more rhythmically in terms of, like, off-time rhythms. Like, you get some of that stuff that's more akin to, like, again, I Hate God. Oh, yeah. Lots of those, like, you know, I wouldn't call them, like, jazzy, but they're definitely off-time. And how the riffs play off of that, it's really interesting because you get a lot of these, like, stuttering, stumbling sections in terms of, like, the beat going on, like a weird measure. The riffing sounds a lot like the vocals do. When I say that, I mean, like, the vocals in this case, while I think they're a mix between I Hate God and Earth Crisis as far as his vocal delivery is concerned, a lot of it is just, 
him yelling and screaming at you like like he's drunken. The riffs carry that same kind of weight. It's like everybody is just drunk out of their minds playing an instrument and yelling at you. Yeah, the song CSP is where I got that vibe at first. There's like this little kind of stutter or a stumble mm -hmm. in the uh, you know rhythm. And it's almost like someone kind of drunkenly meandering around the street and tripping over a bit of the sidewalk that's raised up a bit. Been or... There. <laughs> you know, in your house, just kind of stumbling around, knocking over shit, and then the second you tell them, hey, could you watch out, then they get violent and tell you about how horrible their relationship is with their mother. <laughs> and then you're just kind of stuck with that, and that could either turn into rage or weeping. Dealer's choice on that one, I don't know, it kind of depends on your buddy. I've been in all those places. I've been <laughs> drunk and stumbling in the streets and drunk and stumbling in my own house. But then if you want to talk about real drunk and slow and miserable and, and downtrodden, Songs like Off Switch, which is one of the nastiest, heaviest songs on here, I think, with its giant bending riff and, and just absolutely just stank faced throughout that entire seven minute and some second song. It's the longest song. Oh, it's gross. And then, not to mention The Gurges, the second to last track, which is equally as disgusting. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, the Gurges, I don't even know what the hell that word means. I assume that's like the uh, last couple of burps you have before you throw your guts up after a long night of drinking. That sounds appropriate. Sounds fair. But they're both slow, dark, very cathartic, like almost agonized. But they're kind of different. Off switch, first off, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, it's the on switch for the stank face. Like as soon as you hear Ugh. that first bend, your face does that. Ugh. And it sticks there. But it has this just kind of like lumbering, menacing vibe. It's just a disgusting sounding song. And it's legit kind of one riff. Mm -hmm. Like it really doesn't change. It has some key changes on this bending riff, but it sticks with it. All the way to pretty much the end where they do kind of break it down, squeeze in some drum fills, and then <laughs> they slow it down like a half step. <laughs> and... Yeah, I mean, if you've been listening to Sludge or Doom or you just like sick breakdowns, you know the slower it gets, the more stank comes out. You ever seen that scene in Trading Places where uh, Louis stumbles into the party after he's been exiled by the, the Dukes, right? And he stumbles into that party dressed as Santa Claus and he's filling his suit with fish and meat and all types of things and then he he gets outside and it's pouring rain and he's trying to drink and the liquor bottle falls through the bag and he just goes... It's that. Yeah. It's no, that moment. That is accurate. <laughs> but comparing that to the Gurges, the Gurges is twice as anguished somehow. Most of it driven by the vocals. Now, granted, there's more riff changes in here. You get this like cool harmonic tag to mm -hmm. this just single big noisy chug and yeah this tone is built to pretty much only do that but the vocals really propel this just because they're ranting and raving and i'll be honest the dude kind of sounds like the tasmanian devil except like on the verge of vomiting like there's like so much blah and it's it's just so gross but the way he is you know speaking these lines it's desperate it's anguish it's absolutely just miserable sounding it's like he's pleading for his life or maybe someone else's i don't know and it is really compounded by just how flat out heavy that song is there's like some brief riff changes where you get some like big descending doomy riffs and my god like the song is just like i don't know the weight of the world coming down in you and he sounds almost exhausted by the end of it. Like, you know, it sounds like this was a real outpouring. Most of the vocals are unhinged. Like, there isn't a moment where it's straightforward at all. With the, he goes from screams to growls to yelling to screaming to pleading. Reminds me a lot of Kurt Cobain in his early days when he used to do his unhinged vocal bit and lay on the floor and scream and kind of cry and mumble and whatnot. Reminds yeah. me a lot of that. Yeah, like Bleach era yeah. Nirvana. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I can definitely hear that. And in terms of like atmosphere, like there, there really isn't anything additional, but there's some like twisted soundscapes that kind of start off songs. But they're good about like kind of like leading in and, and letting you know mm -hmm. like something menacing and dark is coming. The isolated bass sections on Off Switch and CSB are just kind of great in terms of just building the mood. Like that tone will absolutely rumble too. 
but you can already hear how dark and twisted these riffs are. And when it comes down to like the more up-tempo stuff, it's just violent and angry. Kind of has like two different gears. Either it is just completely despondent and miserable and completely unapproachable, or it's approaching you fastly because it wants to fight or destroy something of yours or vandalize a building. <laughs> like there's just a, a vibe about this. Like either way you run into this person, if you know this album was a person, it's not going to be a good time. No. But back to the atmosphere, another thing that contributes to that are the, like, solos or leads. I don't know what they are. I don't know what they are either, but the first one that comes up on Misanthropizer, it, it's like a weird kind of, like, mashuga anti-solo, but with, like, a just a sizzly, gross wah effect on it. Again, I think it harkens the comparison to being drunk. Reminds me actually of going to a party and some dude stumbles over and picks up your guitar and says, I can play this fucker. And then turns it on Please put that as down, loud sir. as it'll go and just goes blah, 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 blah. Sm Smoke coming out of my amp now. Yeah, Dick and that's, that's a lot of what it is. I mean, it's not even really notes per se. It's just like stumbling around a guitar. But it's something that absolutely fits the vibe on here. It does. The uh, interesting, I don't know, like weird effect that's on the beginning of lead transfusion. It's almost like a semi truck idling. Kind of. Like it's just kind of revving up. And then it just kind of slowly builds into the song, which has some really cool off time drums. I really like the drum work on here in particular. It's kind of simple and minimalistic. Like a lot of this is just driven by like a weaponized tone like the tone yeah. is flat out lethal but in terms of like the stuff they throw in here to kind of make it stand out a lot of it i think is in the really interesting drum patterns like that kind of goes back to like the i hate god comparison yeah it's nothing to write home about but it's the little things in this case like there's just moments where there's a little bit of a stutter or a little bit of like almost a, a misplaced kick drum or a misplaced snare hit that somehow works. Like the song x -Lex has this really strange, off-time, kind of swingy pattern to it, but it took me a second to find the groove, and normally that doesn't happen. But I was just like, uh, uh, okay, all right, all right. Okay, I get it, I get it. And it's this cool swingy pattern, but it's just a little bit of a stutter on it. And it's, again, in this case, less is more. Yeah, it, it's like a weird hiccup, but yeah. I don't know, it, it kind of works. Like, you know, the whole thing about this album is not feeling comfortable. It's like, there's no way I think anyone really listens to this for comfort music. I mean, I could be wrong, but the, you know, constantly shifting, murky, disgusting nature of this album, the riffs being very simplistic, but again, just heavier than hell. And what accents they do throw on there are like kind of minimal, but it's the fact that they like to do a lot of slides, mm -hmm. bends, they kind of lurch out for you and just kind of like try to grab at you. And it works. Like it gives this album such a, God, almost like kind of toxic, yeah. disgusting feel. Like somehow it sounds like crispy and raw and disgusting, but at the same time, like there's this sort of like dripping sort of like wetness to it. Mm -hmm. It's like stomach acid, which I'm pretty sure is getting spewed out with every vocal take. But I have to say, like, there's some really catchy moments on here in terms of these, like, big riffs. Concrete Shock has some, like, kind of straight up, like, stoner metal riffs. Like, almost, like, kind of, like, The Sword or Caius. Sabbath. Be it being played by, you know, Weed Eater or uh, Buzz Oven. And Lit Transfusion and x -Lex, honestly, like, big, like, helmet vibes on there, too. You know, kind of takes me back to those first few albums that I absolutely love. So, I mean, there are some really interesting hooks here, but they're not like your straightforward metal hooks. Like, a lot of this is just drone. Mm -hmm. And, man, if you like the main riff they're playing, good, because you're going to hear it a lot. Yes. And on that, if you don't like the main riff they're playing, well, you should probably just move on in the next track and hopefully you like that next riff because they're going <laughs> right. to play it a lot too. Right. That is kind of a slight gripe I have in here where this band will drone on riffs for long periods of time and there's not a tremendous amount of riff changes. Like mm. there are some on the more like up-tempo tracks, like you get a little bit more you know, shifty, I guess. But 
Like, not that much. When it gets down to the back half of the record, like everything from lead transfusion onward, that's when more riffs come into play, or at least more changes slash transitions. But the first, like, five, six songs... Yeah, you better like that riff, because that's the only riff they play. That is kind of a gripe, just because you're like, all right, all right, I get it. I get it. We're droning on this. I get it. I get it. And maybe another riff? No. Too bad. Fuck you. Yeah. But, I mean, again, it depends on the riff. Like, honestly, we had no issue with off switch. In fact, None. they should just call it on switch, because, yeah, like, I, I completely dug the hell out of that album. Same thing with the Gurges. There are some more changes in it, but it does stick to that one a lot. It's just, occasionally, there's some riffs that, like, you know what? I uh, kind of move it along a little bit. Like, Lead Transfusion kind of hung on the main riff quite a bit, and it wasn't that interesting. And maybe a little bit on Misanthropizer, too. Mm -hmm. But the main culprit in terms of just, like, the one thing I didn't like was the last track, O.D. Rose, which is just a horrifying soundscape. I was legit getting hacked, Balbia PTSD, <laughs> and I still never want to listen to that again. I'm going to listen to it tomorrow for the Eclipse. I'm going to take a speaker into work and just blast that while people come in. I'm excited. Well, that'll be why the world ends, because you did that. Well, then whatever. It went out on a, on a solemn yet horrifying note. Yeah, it's just feedback and buzzing and some odd noises and noise swells and growling. I mean, maybe that's what it sounds like when you OD. I have no idea. I don't know. I mean, honestly, but, maybe it's what it sounds like when you die. Like, that's the thing maybe. you hear when you die. There's like... I don't know, like weird distorted breaths in it, and it's 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 horrifying. I mean, kind of maybe a perfect way to close this album because the rest of this is horrifying but musical. Mm -hmm. This was just you know like one last dose of just here. This should shatter the rest of the bones in your ear holes. <laughs> so take that. But overall, I really dug this. Like this was just a gross, cathartic, twisted, dark listen. And I'm still really into that. Um, overall, I'm going to give this four stars. I just kind of like the vibe. The riffs are simple, but it's not so much about what they're playing. It's almost more about how they're playing it. Like, again, these riffs are just kind of gross, primal. But they add these big, lurching bends and mm -hmm. slides to it. And the tone itself, like... When they isolate one of the guitars and then bring in the second guitar, it's going from first to like third gear. It's so damn thick and gross and sonically like, you know, put it up there with like some of the heaviest albums I've heard this year. It would be in the conversation for sure. Yeah, it does kind of drone on in certain points where I don't necessarily like the riff they're playing, but it also drones on in points where I absolutely love the riff they're playing. So it's kind of give or take there. But overall, if you're a big fan again of Buzz Oven, I Hate God, Weed Eater, and like Fudge Tunnel, Helmet, Unsane, Today is the Day, the noisiest, darkest, and maybe not always the slowest, but occasionally the slowest, murkiest, darkest, grossest stuff you could possibly listen to in terms of sludge metal, it's definitely this. Uh, I do need to get some Iron Monkey in my collection, apparently, because, I, again, I thought I had some, but I was wrong, and I'm going to correct that. So No monkey. Yep, no monkey, but we're going to correct that. Four stars, this thing's a banger. I agree with Nick. Four stars. It's a great listen. It is heavy and gnarly and gross, and, uh, I mean, it's riffy in the sense that there is a riff, and they hold on to it forever, but it again is in the way it's presented. Like it's just presented in the, the darkest, grossest, coldest way possible. Uh, the vocals are absolutely disturbing, caustic at best. Again, a mix between I Hate God and Earth Crisis. And if you've listened to both those bands, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Just getting screamed at and yelled at and growled at by an old drunken bastard. Like, that's what's happening here. Some of these songs are just downright disgusting. Most notably Off Switch and The Gurges. Just bleh. Legit, there's so much stank in this album. If you put on deodorant before listening to this album, you'll have to put on deodorant after you listen to this album because you will stink too. Fair enough. Yeah, the riffs do tend to drone on for a long time, and while that is a gripe, like, it does make it all catchy. Like, you have no choice but to have these riffs stuck in your head. You've heard them for the last seven minutes. Yeah, I, I didn't know what to expect getting into this, but it is just simply gross, and I really like that. 
Uh, if you're a big fan of, much like Nick said, Weed Eater, Bongzilla, uh, in my opinion, I get a lot of huge down two vibes. Crowbar, definitely for the gurges. Like, it's just heavy and gross and nasty. And if you like that stuff, you're really going to dig this. I'd recommend checking it out. So, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com. Our Patreon link is there. It is also on our channel up in the bottom right hand corner on our banner. But if you're looking for Thralls Metal stuff, you have to go to thrallsmetal.com. We have shirts, both new shirts and old shirts which the old shirts are discounted provided we have your size and we even have hats too so if you're looking for any of that stuff click the link down below and you know really we talk about merch all the time and hats and shirts and whatever and you guys are buying it and you guys are the reason that we do this we thank you each and every one of you from the bottom of our black and little hearts for continuing to tune in and pay attention to us and talk to us and comment and do all the wonderful things you do uh, he's going to be at the metal and beer fest next weekend in philly if you see him come say hello after that we'll be at maryland death fest we'll both be there please come say hello that's going to be a crazy killer time got album reviews coming discography rankings states of metal is it metal is it not metal 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 that's what we do here on thralls of metal thank you guys nick tell them more yeah you guys absolutely rule and uh yeah looking forward to overloading you guys with more content because that is 100 percent what we do here so one more big thank you because of all of your awesomeness thank you and we will catch you later